Hello, dear friends. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the Majestic Family Channel. Uh -huh. My name is Jory, and this is my lovely wife. Vidime or B. Make sure you have subscribed to the channel and comment down below so we can stay in touch. Don't forget to like, share, turn on your notification bell so, so you, you know, know when a new video, video comes out. out. Thank you. All right, today. Today. We have. <laughs> who stole my wedding ring? Who stole my wedding ring? Honey, who stole your wedding ring? I'm not sure, but we're going to talk about Let's it. Let's talk about it. So we've gotten this question quite often. Yep. And we Why do doesn't Bename wear a wedding ring? Yes, that's the question we got a lot. Are and we married? I, I would hope so. <laughs> we are. <laughs> um, and we didn't know if we should talk about it or when we should talk about it. Right, yeah. But yeah, it comes up a lot. So we're like, well, I guess maybe. Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't want to step on toes mm -hmm. um, and we want to be careful how we approach it, but mm -hmm. we'll go ahead and talk about it. Yeah. Right. We didn't write anything down because it's hard to like categorize like what, ha like who stole my ring, who stole my ring. <laughs> um, and so we're just like, we're going to just talk. Mm -hmm. Like we're just going to talk to you guys and do yeah. a little story time. Yeah, and maybe you can, maybe you've experienced the same thing or something similar. Right. You can let us know in the comments. Yeah, let us know. And yeah, and if you guys would like a follow up, you know, let us know as well. Yeah. So I did pick out and buy a beautiful engagement and wedding ring for Biname. Mm -hmm. And you've, if you look in some of our like wedding videos or things like that, I think we have pictures of yeah. it. Yeah. You know, it was gorgeous but anyway i had saved for it and mm -hmm. and bought it but then um where'd it go <laughs> it was stolen <laughs> yes and not stolen in like the traditional stealing sense yeah um it was different and so it was part of our believe it or not part of our christian faith journey journey that yeah. that this happened so Jo when Jory and I got married, before we got married, we were um, we lived fairly close by, like maybe forty five minutes away from mm -hmm. each other. So <clears throat> certain Sundays we would go to church together, and um, what how what we learned in church was pretty much similar. Similar doctrine, like Doc we, we, yeah. we grew up in like charismatic New Testament type churches. Right. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's so our in that way our walk was. A bit similar. Never heard anything about, you know, this prosperity gospel, quote unquote, or anything of that nature. So mm -hmm. when we moved down south, we went to a particular church. We're not going to say the church's name. And it was just like full of that doctrine. Right. It's just like you give $10, God's going to give you, you know, $1,000 and right. things of that nature. And so like... We looked at each other and like, how come we've never heard of this teaching before? <laughs> right, so like, we had been taught like yeah, tithes tithe. and, uh -huh. and then offerings. Mm -hmm. You know, you give 10%, that's your tithe. And then if you want to give an offering, that's above. Right. Um, but had never like heard the, the message on seed and right. sowing right. taken to the extent that the prosperity gospel does. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know since we'd never encountered it or heard about it that that's what was happening at this church. Mm -hmm. And and so we we came in and we're like, oh, wow, this is new. We've never heard this. Mm -hmm. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You can sow and then you'll reap a, a reward. Right. And, and we, <clears throat> you know, it's very easy to buy into that. Especially because, when you don't have. I'm right. sorry to interrupt you. No, you're absolutely you. right. Especially when you don't have. Means. You know, the means. Yeah. Um, when you don't have money, the idea of being able to sow and get, get more. Something. It was easy for us to do that because right. in by nature, we're both givers. Um, right. So it was easy to give. And the reward, reaping the reward wasn't just for us. I remember even us talking like, oh, this will be, will be able right. to help our families. Right. Like, um, <clears throat> so yeah, let me preface this video by saying that... Um, I'm taking like full responsibility because at the end of the day, this is my walk mm -hmm. and it's up to me to open my Bible. Each of us. Yeah. To learn about what God's word really right. says. Right. And 
Yes, there is accountability on the pastor's um, well, uh, teaching as without well, a doubt. because they're supposed <laughs> to be, you know. The Bible says that they're held to a higher standard. Right, but I don't want to put all the blame on them. Right. I should have opened my my word right. and, you know, studied for right. myself like I have in the and years that's, following. And, and really, ultimately, that's what attending that church does did for did us. For us. So that was a blessing. It forced yeah. us into scripture to look for ourselves. Yeah. So we, we were there, we heard these teachings and it appealed mm -hmm. to us. And it's like, wow, this is like investing on steroids. You put a little bit in and get a whole bunch back yeah. from God. And mm -hmm. it's like, wow, God wants us to do this. Yeah. Wow. This is amazing. This is great. And so, um, you know, we, we started hearing these teachings, you know, that if you don't have enough, then sow it and God will take care of it. If you, if you know, like we had a lot of examples. One, should I share one? Yeah, yeah. So one, one of the examples is our car needed a full engine replacement. Yeah. Um, something had happened with the car and it was in the shop. And we were told that um, we heard over and over like this phrase, if it's not enough to meet your need, it must be seed. So whatever money you have, if it's not enough to take care of whatever you need to pay for, you should sow it into my ministry, whatever ministry it is, and then God will take care of that bigger expense that you have. Mm -hmm. And so we did that. We had, you know, we needed three times what we had, so we sowed that. We, we, we had saved up $800. Right, like yeah, we had saved up $800. We needed 2500 or something, or something like that. Mm -hmm. to put the engine in this little car, and we didn't have it, and we're like, we need a car now. We're just going to trust God and sow this because this is what we were taught. Mm -hmm. And so we gave it to the church. And, and then time went on, time went on. We couldn't get the engine for the car and we ended up scrapping it. Sending for it to the much? junkyard for like 200 bucks. A hundred dollars. A uh, hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, it was next to nothing. And so um, <sighs> not to say that like one example sets a precedence, but the prosperity gospel is a lie. It's not the true gospel. Mm -hmm. And so, and one of those things that happened, and here it is, um, I don't remember what time of year it was, but there was this big offering that they were doing where you could sow big and reap a big harvest from God, you know? And Hi. We were happily doing a project. It's okay, it's okay. So, like Jory explained about the car, this wasn't like a one-off thing. Right, like, There no. have been several other many, things that many occurred um also it's not like just like a one-time message it was like every message <laughs> would start and we're like oh we're about to get a revelation today like and then it always ends with some sort of prosperity right you know wording and yeah. things of that nature it was crazy that somehow by the end of every message we end up to back that. to and this is why you need to sow into the ministry well and then they also tell you like if you don't sow that's why bad oh, things happen yeah. to you you're cursed <laughs> yeah, with the curse so think of it if like you don't yeah if you don't sow into the ministry you're under a curse a curse and think of it as a 21 <laughs> i mean you Think of yourself being 21 and mm -hmm. 25, mm -hmm. how naive you were to certain things. So if well, you, and I, I may have been, we may have been even more naive because we both grew up very sheltered. Shelter, and yeah. we've <clears throat> never heard of this message. So mm -hmm. if you're hearing a pastor, your life is in shambles <laughs> because you're not uh, uh, right. giving, right. knowing that right. we gave on right. a consistent basis. Right. Like there was and we not did, a... We did struggle like financially yeah. when we first started out living in the South. Right, right. And so we're like, oh, maybe it's because we're not sowing enough. God wants us to sow and mm -hmm. then our life will get better and easier and yeah. we'll have money. <laughs> so don't get in the comment and go, where did you tithe? Uh, like faithfully and I'm actually annoyed <laughs> yes. that we have to share that like it's so annoying right. but yeah. just know on our end we had it on lockdown I mean yeah. we have stories and that's not, not stories. to brag that's just yeah that's just to share truth with you guys right like so you're not deceived right and so what does it do to your psyche if you're seeing your situation and it's not that great and your pastor, who's supposed to be helping you, right. encourage you, tell you, well, you're in that situation because you're cursed, because right. you're not given enough. And so, <laughs> yeah, it only made sense for us when we didn't have um, enough to take care of the car to give what we have. Let me right. high science 2020 now right. look at it. I'm like, we were so dumb. 
having a mindset of of giving and of generosity mm-hmm. is exactly what God wants to have Absolutely. in believers. Yeah. And and he wants us to grow into a place where we give as a cheerful giver. That verse is misused as well. Yes. Uh, because it says each one should give what he's purposed Purpose. in his heart. That's right. And, and the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So yes. it's that's the problem when you're when you're coerced or manipulated or drummed up to mm-hmm. give that's not giving what you've purposed in your heart. That's giving be under compulsion. compulsion. So yeah. that's actually that's actually an indictment on giving under compulsion. That's right. Not an indictment on your state of being where you have to like, oh, I need to be cheerful. I have to give, so I got to make myself <laughs> cheerful. Make myself cheerful. No, yeah. it's it's you've purposed to give it. Yeah. And you want to grow into a place of generosity. It's uh, um, God loves us to be generous. Yeah. Uh, he wants it to be from a genuine place, though. And the, yeah. it was hard for us to break away from that mindset, and me specifically. I remember, like, fighting every time Jordan would get a paycheck, like, thinking, no, we have to give this amount. It was hard not to, like, do it how I, we were used to doing it under that church. Um, it just, it felt, it was, like, when I tell y'all, it was, like, breaking chains off to get that mindset off. But the testimony is that once that mindset was broken and it was like, give according to what you have purposed in your heart. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, oh, I determine what and how much I want to give when I want to give it. Mm -hmm. We determine that. So once that was set, like the blessings were just like... (laughs) We finally understood, and our lives have just been, like, financially... It's been better, yeah. A lot better. Like there's In our lives, we cannot draw a correlation to this sowing. Absolutely this not. Gospel. Um, and we've always loved being generous. Absolutely. So, so it does kind of come naturally, but God wants us to be generous. If yeah. you're not, it's something you need to grow in Growing. as a believer. However, and I didn't intend to get into this too much, but the 10% tithe... Um, is not for today. Yeah, it's not. No. It was meant for the priesthood to support them yes. in the time when they functioned under the Mosaic covenant. Mm-hmm. Tithe now props up um, the way the the church system. stands. Mm-hmm. It props up that church system and pays the salaries of career preachers mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and all the staff involved in these businesses. The church is us, the believers, yeah. not not a building or a staff. Yeah. Um, and I think there's definitely a place for leadership Absolutely. in the body. Absolutely. And, and those people should be servants. And yes, the body should look at them and say, I want to bless them since they're, they're the shepherds. You know, yeah. they're working to, they're not over, they're working to serve. To serve. Yeah. And, and so I want to bless them. Yeah. Um, but the tithe now props up a system that's, a little off yeah especially if here the there's i no, think there's no need for it <laughs> i think one thing that clicked off for me too was that if these pastors are supposed to serve mm-hmm. a they don't even know the state or their like of uh, the state of their flocks mm-hmm. they don't know it right because well, some are better than others there's some really great absolutely i'm saying there. like for mega churches you don't yeah. and i know they've set things in oh, uh, in yeah. place to like help you know, right. you um, be connected to a leader, but like even they don't know the state of their flocks because mm-hmm. if I'm struggling financially and I am listening to my pastor talk about his investments and he has four or five homes mm-hmm. and his children are eating good and he's eating good, taking his wife on all these trips, and here I am. Like, he's not more spiritual than me. Right. God doesn't love him more than he does right. me. Like, to see that this is a game. Like, right. and not that's all exactly of them start used, this way. Right. Yeah. Like, Instead of being humble about it, they say, you could be here too if you right. sow more. Right. And it's like, <laughs> no, that's not true. It's, it's important that to... they understand the truth. Yes. yes. Because we, we had to walk a, a long road of figuring mm-hmm. it out while we were there. Mm-hmm. And thank God we did when we did yeah so yeah but, but it was it ahead. hurt and so um, yeah. this 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 offering came up and uh they were really like 
drumming up the importance of this offering. This is it. This is the tip, the bucket tipper, or whatever. You're... Right. Like this is gonna this is gonna make the difference, and your blessings gonna all come in. Overflow. Based on how you sow into this one offering. Yes. And we're like, all right, this is it. We didn't have anything. anything. I mean, we had given everything. <laughs> everything. When I say everything, everything. Oh. And yeah, don't come on the comment section and talk about you guys are bitter or whatever. No, we're good. I'm, I'm not bitter, but it still hurts. It's upsetting it to think hurts. that there is a 20 year old <laughs> Bename out there right. going through the same oh, thing. Yeah, there and could if be I can, a young couple struggling yeah, to get by. Right. Yeah. And if we can reach them and go, no, 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 go to the word and yeah. see what, what does yeah, God Yeah, be careful what you? Jesus you're serving. Yeah. Yeah. But go ahead, babe. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we had nothing to give. Mm -hmm. and, and we were like, we got to do this. We, we had bought in. We believed. We were just eating out of this, mm -hmm. everything this pastor, you mm -hmm. know, was saying. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so we're like, what do we got? I mean, we got to give something. What's valuable? What's the most valuable thing we have? It was Ben Amaze Ring. Mm -hmm. And guys, it was very valuable. I, yeah. I... As a single guy, you know, I worked outdoor jobs, you know, construction type jobs, and I had invested a couple thousand dollars into an account, um, into a into a good investment, and it grew um, substantially. And when I pulled it out, I was able to buy a really nice ring with it. Mm -hmm. um, it had, yeah, and so uh, we decided we were going to give our wedding rings. Mm -hmm. Um, ben May's engagement ring was coupled with her wedding ring, and I had a gold wedding band with some birthstones, our birthstones in it. Mm -hmm. um, it was worth a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And we put in there the valuation, that, the independent valuation that had been given for those rings by a, um, some gemological whatever, mm -hmm. I don't remember. We put it in with, in the envelope with our gift, both our rings in there, put it in this offering at the church. And... Uh, when did we know that, wait a minute, something is off here? Like, do you remember? No. Okay. So at the end of the year, if you go to church, you know that you'll receive like a tax. Um, you can claim your gifts or whatever that mm -hmm. you've given to the church. Mm -hmm. And we saw all the gifts we've given, but the only one that wasn't on there was the ring. Well, I mean. But there's no saying, mention but, but at how, all. But how would you quantify that exactly? You know what the I mean? The valuation is there. Yeah. So maybe someone just pocketed it. I don't know. <laughs> but another thing that made it awkward was the set. The following Sunday, the pastor was like, in his pulpit, don't like think you've given. Um, almost like don't get your head up. I, like don't become big headed because this is how much you were supposed to give anyway. Like it was like this attitude of right, and I was just like, are almost, you almost like diminishing? Kidding the fact me? That we gave up something so valuable. So to us. yes, I was just yeah. like, oh my goodness, he, he he either he doesn't care or he doesn't know. Right. Like, but give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> yeah. Um. And so later on down the years, actually since we've been doing YouTube, I was listening to this YouTuber. She's a, a lady that has um, people on that she interviews that have come out of the prosperity gospel. Mm -hmm. And one girl was working at another prominent um, pastor's right. church. Yeah, you all would know the name if we said the name. Yes. <laughs> and so she said the pastor one day got up and talked about a couple who gave their wedding rings away uh, and how mm -hmm. everybody should be given like that. Right. I was like... Yeah. And it's it's definitely no coincidence because that pastor and the pastor that was over the church we were in have connections. Connect they all have connections. Yeah, in that prosperity gospel circle. Yes. They're all tied to together. They use each other's stories. They, they use similar manipulative stories. <laughs> yeah. Things started making more sense too because I used to watch another guy on TV. He's all about like I paid, you know... Uh, cash for my airplanes or whatever the case might be <laughs> well he told a story um, about something that happened between him and his son and I went to church the following Sunday our pastor said the same thing about I'm like, himself yeah. and I'm like so whose story is this he didn't say like such an you know let me right. tell you a they're story all about using it in first person and I'm like just it's like, their story 
This is a <laughs> is this a game? It is. This is a, this is a game, and I feel bad because I know what Jude says, the the book book um, of Jude, what it talks about, and how pastors like you guys. This it's heavy. That's why Jory's not quick to go. I'm a pastor. No, yeah, um, I, I don't feel like I am. Right. Yeah. It's. I I love I love you know looking at the word and encouraging people with what I see, but it's to a take heavy that on, heavy it's, thing to carry, yeah. and you should not take it lightly. And so my heart also goes out to them because God's not mocked. Like, right. there's going to be a reckoning, a right. day of reckoning. And so it's like... Yeah, the truest response is yeah. to pray for those who are being deceived and pray for those who are doing the deception. The de yeah. Because they both need to get on track and be well, you know, with the Lord. Well, you know, Benny Hinn, you know, I have to say his name because he came out and said maybe we took it too far. So I don't know where he's at right now with that, but I can appreciate that. Just that admission. Just the act, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm not, was I'm, huge for me. I'm certainly not hitching my cart to any horse when it no, comes to no, ministries I'm not, or men. But what I'm saying is, I could appreciate that he said it. He said it, yeah. Um, okay. Because he doesn't even know, just in speaking that, how many minds he helped right. freed. Right. Um, to like you know, what's been happening. So yeah, that's kind of how my wedding ring was stolen. Um, so, yeah. and that's why Bename doesn't have a wedding ring on. <laughs> We're still very married. Very. The ring, the <laughs> ring doesn't make you married or not. Yeah. I mean, that, that in itself is not a tradition you see in the Bible. Right. But it is, it is nice because people know in this day and age, yeah. when they see it, She's taking they're married. It. Yeah. <laughs> and y'all better stay away. <laughs> And I do want to get Bename a ring again. We've been extremely busy with life. And every time there's um, the opportunity, uh, we decide that it's... It's just better not to give me the ring. Let's do something different. Yeah, yeah. I'm, it's definitely on my mind and it's coming. <laughs> I'm I'll, excited. I'll put a ring back on that finger. <laughs> yeah. And you have rings you wear. Um, I was wearing some, but I end, it ended up like breaking or something yeah. happening to it. I'm and just it's not like, the you same to wear I'm a done. cheap ring. No, it's not. It's not the same. It's not. So. Yeah. So that is our story. I know, like I said, a lot of people have <laughs> asked. There you go. Um, like, yeah, we didn't mean to step on any toes or, you know, are wanting to do this. It's just to speak the truth. Right. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I don't um I don't want to leave off having not said something or said something that leaves you with the wrong idea. Right. Um go meet with believers. Mm -hmm. Um definitely be generous. generous That's what yeah. the Bible talks about. It's a good thing. Um, but read your word. Mm -hmm. Read the word of God and study it and and yeah, mm -hmm. meet with believers and talk about it and mm -hmm. and give respect to each other as believers. Mm -hmm. Um uh, no, the church nowadays is not perfect as yeah. it stands. However, it is still believers. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ still exists in the earth. Mm -hmm. And even though our mindset may not be perfect, um, yeah. you, you, you'll you be hard pressed to find a perfect group of believers. Yeah. And if you do, I've heard it said, don't join it because you're you'll not perfect <laughs> and you'll ruin the perfection. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not perfect. Benjamin is not perfect, mm -hmm. but um, God is perfect. And the people of God are beautiful, awesome people. Yeah, and I also wanted to say, like, for anyone that's gone through something um, similar, more traumatizing, just know that it's it's not God's fault. Um, right. At the end of the day, right. something beautiful he gave us all is free will and mm -hmm. choices to make. Yeah. So um, he has his word out there. So that's why we say we are encouraging you to read it. Um, the word for yourself and right. get in a relationship with God because then when crazy doctrines come along you can say mm, that is not what I read right. right that's not what I'm sensing in my spirit right um and just because you're young it doesn't mean you can't get in the word and right. something I had to tell mm -hmm. myself is that you know just because I'm 21 22 does not mean I can't research <laughs> um I can't read and reread and mm -hmm. you know and learn so yeah, and if you have ever been told that you are cursed with a curse, we mm -mm. just, in Jesus' name, we say you are blessed, not That's because right, of yeah. 
what you do, but the standing that you have with Jesus Christ. Right. He's fond of you. He loves you very much and that he is good to the righteous and the unrighteous. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you're important. <laughs> yeah. All right. There, we finally shared it. Finally, it's out there. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah. And with that, dear friends, keep, keep looking, looking up. up.